So if you've been one of those people that was really excited to get a plant that you've been seeing for a while and it's been on your wish list forever and you finally get that plant and you're just like, is, is, is this it? Is this all there is to this plant? Stick around with me and let's have a look at plants that did that for me. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today's video is kind of the companion video of the other video that I'm posting this week. As I said in that video, I don't know which one's going to come out first, but there is going to be two. One, plants that surprised me in a positive way and plants that have underwhelmed me. Guess which one this one is. Hopefully the title and the intro might, <laughs> might have clued you in. So this is the slightly more negative one. <laughs> but yeah, the, these are plants that there's been a lot of hype about them. Even I got into the, oh, I can finally get this plant and it's very cool. And I'm kind of like looking forward to owning this and growing this. And you kind of get that plant and you're just a bit like, oh. that kind of almost... <laughs> Not instantaneous deflation. Some of them were instantaneous deflations where you kind of like take one look at it and just go, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh. And then there's plants that are a bit like, oh, growing it for a while and you're just like, I don't know. I just don't with this plant. It's a bit like, uh. Uh, and before anybody asks, I am still growing them. I will continue to grow them for a bit and see if my opinion changes because I have had plants like this that have changed in my opinion, over a period of time. So <laughs> I'm looking at the Philodendron Jose Bueno because I actually did a video, I think, on the Jose Bueno, I think, if there is, and I'll put a review up there, where I slated it about how slow it was to get going. And an awful lot of you said, that has not been the experience that you've had. And I will now concur with every single one of those comments because now that it's finally rooted in and growing, it's growing super fast. I do have a plant that looks like that plant on this list. So without further ado, let's look at the first one. And actually, let's start with the one that does look like the Jose Bueno. And I've got it on the corner here and I've had to tie it up because there are some good things about this plant and I will tell you them now, basically. I only just watered this yesterday as well, so it's really, really heavy. But I'll bring you over here so we've got a bit more space to chat. This is the Philodendron Paraiso day. So similar leaf shape, not exactly the same as the Jose Bueno, but it's paddly leaves. You can see here some of the bottom leaves which are slowly yellowing out at the moment. I'm trying to see if there is at least one leaf that you might be able to see. There you go. This one's possibly the best leaf and I didn't grow that one. I can't take any credit for it. You can see some of the darker speckling there. Some of this yellowing leaves, ironically enough, the oldest ones are doing well. This is how it came from the growers. <sighs> This underwhelmed me so, so much. I will give you the positives first, and you might be able to see there's a very blunt cut there because I've had to take off uh, at least two nodes, basically. But this plant was probably, if this is the height of it now, probably two or three times the height. So first issue, exceptionally leggy, exceptionally long internodal spaces. This is getting the most amount of life that I can possibly give it. So light isn't the issue. It's not stretching for the light. It doesn't have a moss pole, but you can see the aerial roots are four days. And again, that's a positive, so easy to propagate. I will lift this up, and this is again one of the few plants that is in soil but in a cash po, just so you can see the volume of roots within this pot and just to clarify i think i got this two three months ago now it had a grown its soil media i up potted it to a bigger size pot with more growing media and that's two months worth of growth and quite how much is gone and this was already hitting the ceiling of the conservatory within the first month of owning it absolutely insane growth rate now on the negative side of things, from what people have said, and I will experience this now for the first time, I think, is the moment that you take a cutting from this plant, which almost begs you to take cuttings because of the way that it grows and quite how easy it should be to take that cutting and propagate. How easy it is to propagate, I don't know. I am propagating in water now, and I will find out if you have 
propagated this in water and you've had experiences, both negative and positive, do let me know down below. I'd be very curious. But a lot of people say the moment that you take that cutting, the next leaf that will come out is green. <laughs> Every single leaf that I've had in this plant has been green so far in my care. And there's a lot of people that say it needs heat in order to bring out that speckling of the leaves. Some people say it needs as much light as you can give it to really get those that splashiness and that kind of patterning on the leaf. Or other people are like, don't give it too much light because then it won't get those kind of colorings on the leaves. So a few things to say about that. This has been growing in here in the conservatory in the summer where it got stupid hot. The leaves did not get the kind of patterning or that kind of level of variegation that you want to see on this plant. Did it have high light? Yes. Did it have low light? Yes. None of these things made a difference to this plant. And that is all of these things combined are the reason why this plant has underwhelmed me. The appearance of it hasn't necessarily underwhelmed me. The, the very much leggy nature of it really has. And I know the irony of somebody who has very little patience in a lot of my videos, isolate plants that are slow. This is definitely not in that category. This is the polar opposite. But yeah. It's not doing it for me. And for a philodendron, this is more needy and more specific about the care that it needs than a calathea or even an anthurium, basically. So I don't know. I kind of look at my philodendrons and go, you're supposed to be my easy, like, plant children. Do not be difficult, basically. And I'm trying to see now because that plant tie is right on the... Uh, point where it's going to start growing so I need to like move that down but yeah for me it's very underwhelming let me see if I can pick up the Jose Bueno to show you the difference basically and follow me around and I will show you the Jose Bueno basically and you might be able to see <laughs> by contrast what the Jose Bueno is like when it starts going. So there is definitely paddly leaves. There is definitely the speckling on the leaves. It is very clear. Do I need to do anything other than just treat this like any other house plant to get this to the level that it is? No. So there is that to be said. So moving on to, <laughs> no, too many people have seen me whinge about this plant at this point, but I'm still added on here because it still underwhelmed me. <laughs> the Monstera Oblica Peru. Because of the runners, because of the fact that it can be quite tricky to grow, I point blank refuse to put it in a terrarium. Granted, I know that if people are growing this well in a terrarium, then that's fine for them. But for me, it's not the case. It does now have three different growing points after I've cut off the three um, runners that it was bringing out. Maybe some of those might have some foliage. I don't know. The reason why it underwhelmed me, I mean, it's still a beautiful plant. I still think there is nothing in my collection that looks like it. It does look a bit like an Adam Sonia. Sorry, I was just checking for pests. I saw a mealy bug on there. But yeah, it's it's very cool. I mean, put it against the white so you can see the holes and leaves. Beautiful. In that respect, don't get me wrong. Very slow. And I've heard all of you, the ones that are quite happy to wait, I get it. It is definitely one that you could enjoy growing. For me, it just underwhelmed me. It really did. It's hopefully I can get this to a point where I can start enjoying it. This one and the other one, I've got the other ones looking particularly busted and I'll see whether or not you might be able to pick it up right at the back there, possibly right there. That one's bringing out some new foliage and it's doing well. You might also be able to spot a trend in this video about plants that have underwhelmed me. Some of them I've got in front of me and I've got out of shelves. Some of them I can't move out of shelves, but <laughs> you will very quickly see that a lot of these plants that have underwhelmed me are tucked into shelves where I can't get them out easily enough. And all I do is just water them and ignore that they exist, basically. <laughs> Problem children, hidden in the back. It's fine. <laughs> it really isn't, but you know. Um, this is one that for me, yeah, it's it's okay. It's okay. And I will say the same thing. And I think the reason why this has been mentioned so far for me is because of how expensive it used to be. Because if I got this for the highest price that I ever heard for an oblique was $40,000. That's a price of a house in certain countries, basically. 
absolutely no. Not for this plant, basically. Absolutely no. For the prices that they are going now, fine. And it's okay. I don't feel that cheated out of money, but whoa, whoa. And I get that a lot of people were doing it as an investment thing where they could just take some cuttings. Ow. Because like, anyway, I have poo-pooed on this plant far too much. I'm not going to dwell on it. You know my opinions. Slightly different plant now. And I don't think you've all seen that I've owned this plant. And I think it's the domino. And I'll bring it in so you might be able to see quite how busted it's also looking as well. <laughs> Variegated peace lily. I think, I think, as I said, it might be the domino. And I got it as a small plant. I didn't get it as a large plant, mainly because... I don't have an awful lot of space for large plants and regardless of whether or not it's got variegated leaves, a peace lily is still a peace lily. I find it exceptionally uninspiring as a house plant. Even the all green format, even before I got into plants, it really wasn't for me basically. But I will say, uh, I've really been underwhelmed with this. It is in semi-hydro. The roots are growing relatively happily. This isn't even on my plant care app that tells you how much I don't care about this. And I just remember to water it when I water it, basically. Very, very, very slow. To the point that if you do want to get something like this, do get a more mature one because this was relatively juvenile. I didn't get it. It wasn't much bigger than this. And it's still not much bigger than what it was, basically. And that's two years now, I think. Yeah. The variegated piece lily for me is a hard, hard pass. It doesn't do very much, and when it does do something, it, I, mean, I mean, pathetic. My experiences, my plants, my collection, my experiences. You, <laughs> your experiences might be different than mine, so bear that in mind. But let's move on to a different type of plant. I don't know if I've... No, I don't think... There's another one that you've not seen before on my channel. <laughs> You'll probably guess why. <laughs> this <laughs> four year old plant almost mm, no I'm, I'm gonna lie this is this is a propagate of a four year old plant the four year old plant didn't make the conservatory refresh basically and uh, some pink princess vibes there of like leaves getting stuck in caterpillars anybody want to take a guess about what this plant is I'll show you the petiole and I'll show you the leaves and it was bigger. It was bigger and it's just getting smaller. I, I probably do need to give it something to climb because the, the leaves are getting smaller as it grows. It, it's keeping its shape. It's not kind of trailing down. So the, 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 the growing stem is a uh, turgid. But yeah, this is the, and I'll show you another leaf that's stuck in the caterpillar there for its sins. The philodendron ornatum. I'm pretty sure this is what this is, basically. I've had the mother plant for four years, got rid of it last year, so I've had that for three years. This was a propagate that was taken quite early on from that plant. It took a very long time to root out. It is in soil. It's doing okay. It doesn't grow particularly fast. The leaves are underwhelming as anything. There's maybe a tiny bit of bumpiness that's happening on the petioles, which might make it a bit more interesting. But wow, this isn't a plant that ever became big, and I I know why. This did okay. It was behind a plant shelf on the side there, um, the mother plant, and it was it kind of vined up that plant shelf. The leaves were uh, this size or smaller. I ignored it. I just watered it whenever I could. Again, spot the theme here. <laughs> You know when you've got certain plants in your collection that you're just like, I need to like weed out certain plants in my collection, but I couldn't possibly get rid of anything. This should be the one that I should have got rid of ages ago. Um, but it's still here and it's still clinging on to dear life. Uh, it's just underwhelming. It's not particularly fast growing. It's not particularly interesting. It's just a bit beige. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but yeah. Philodendron or not and in case you're wondering. Let's have a look at some more coveted plants that people have been wanting for a while. <laughs> you saw the review that I did, and I'll link the review up here for this one, and I did get a lot of hate for how bad it looked. It's got a bit better. There's only one crispy leaf now, but the Monstera adansonii, and this is the Aurea variegata, so the yellow variegated one. You can kind of see there where it's not crisping up, um, or even this leaf here things and opinions that I have about this plant. It is in semi-hydro. Uh, that one stem that you're seeing there, I was hoping was a secondary stem, but when I unrooted it to put it in here, it's actually 
a branch of the same stem. So I doubt, I was hoping this might activate and I put on some cakey paste. Has it done anything? No. Uh, it's lost leaves along the way, quite a few as you might be able to tell. Uh, would this grow a bit better if I had it on a moss pole? Possibly. The other thing I will say is, this is in my space with the humidity levels that I have in this conservatory. With air movement going around because of the fans, with the humidity levels the way that they are, with decent light levels, and I am still getting crispiness on here. To give you context, my Monstera Adansonia, not Adansonia, my Monstera Albo variegated in here, and my Thai Constellation when it was still in here, both never got crispiness or never to this level or this frequency as this plant has getting. So yeah, it is. I wanted to like this. I did. I truly did. I truly did. The sectoral one as well. I have also bought, and I will show you if I can pick it up and bring it up so you can see it, mainly because it's become a lot more available in garden centers. And I think I picked this up for either five or 10 British pounds. And it is the, the minty kind of the more speckly variegated Adansonia. This one is growing better. I will give it that. Does it look diseased? Yes, it does. Um, I'm not even going to debate that one at this point. But yeah, this one for me ticked more boxes because you get those large chunky sections of irrigation. Worth it? No. Worth the price that some of these things were going? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't... Don't get me wrong, there probably are some out there, and I don't know because I haven't seen them, but I haven't been actively trying to see them as well. Has anybody seen these types of variegated Adansonia, the ones that are more sectoral rather than the splashy kind of diseased looking minty ones, basically? Have you seen big, because it's been a while now that this, these plants have been out and people have had chance to get them into their collections. I know a lot of people chopped and propped them and made a quick buck before the prices went boom. But has anybody seen a large established form of this because I'd be really curious to see if it's keeping all of its leaves, if it's not going crispy. Is the white variegated version of this different from the Oreo one? Because I don't know. I mean, I've always grown it in semi hydro, I've never grown it in soil. So I don't know if it'd be different in soil. But damn, this was underwhelming. Not for me. <laughs> Coming into one that you might be surprised by, and I've got a table with all these plants here. The spirit is sancti. Listen, listen, before you all go into the comments and like bite my head off with this one. There is context to why this has underwhelmed me. And I will give you that context. Do I still like this plant? Yes. Am I still looking forward to it to get big and mature? A hundred percent yes. What has underwhelmed me is its speed of growth. And I, I, I'm, I'm understanding why some of these plants were as expensive as they are as well, like especially this one. It can be quite slow at this level. And I think this was seed grown, if I'm not mistaken, from Equigenera. The thing that I've experienced with mine, I don't know whether or not it's going to come up. If I move there, you might be able to see a small dent there. And I've had it on another one of these leaves somewhere, and I can't see where it is now. It does eventually straighten out, but this twice now on two separate leaves is done the whole kind of like bending backwards because it can't release from the caterpill. I don't think I've found what makes this happy just yet. I've had it in slightly higher light. I'm getting more activity to it now that it's going to start to get a bit more gray out there. So the people that were saying it needs slightly lower light than you would imagine, I would tend to agree with you. I'll give it a few more months. But the reason why I'm adding this in is because the juvenile form for me is a bit underwhelming. It's a bit broad. The leaves aren't anything to write home about. I get the hype and I get it when you see those massive, massive mature specimens. I do still think those are beautiful and I cannot wait for this to get to that size. Give me at least three to four years, I would imagine, if not maybe a bit longer. But yeah, the, 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 the immature form is a bit underwhelming. I am just saying that so you've got some idea if you do end up getting this plant and you just go, I don't understand why everybody was making that hype. This is for you. It, it's a plant that you're going to get, you're going to care for, but maybe you're going to tuck away somewhere because it's not anything massively exciting. 
I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to disagree with me on this one, but these are just my views, basically. So slightly underwhelming at the moment. My Philodendron Esmeralda Spirit, which you might be able to see one leaf here and another leaf there. That one is a lot more interesting and a bit faster, and it's getting some of those more mature leaves a bit faster. So if you're stuck between the two, I would go with the hybrid. The hybrid's a bit more interesting, at least in the earlier stages. So the rest of this list, they're probably going to be images or videos because they are what I was talking about before. They are hidden behind other plants in the plant shells because they're more like leave them and forget them, basically. I'll see if I can kind of at least partially show you some of these plants before I show you the images. So one of them, and I'll see if I can kind of shift some of these foliage. You might be able to see right behind this leaf here. And hopefully if I move a bit, you might be able to know the camera, the automatic camera swivel thing is not wanting to stay in one place. But believe me when I say two plants are down there. And those two plants are the Amedrium medium, the blue form, and the Philodendron brantianum. And I don't think either one of those two are going to necessarily surprise anybody, basically. So yes, I will say the Amedrium medium, when it's got foliage and it's not running, is beautiful. No taking away from that. Is it a particularly difficult plant to keep happy? No. Is it a particularly difficult plant to keep from running? Yes. Is it as difficult to keep from running as the obliqua? No. Uh, I thought the medium was bad, the obliqua is so much worse. But yeah, it is one that underwhelmed me because even I was sitting there going, I went into owning this plant knowing this because by the time I got into it is when everybody else was coming out of interest with it because of the running, because of all these things. So I kind of went into it knowing it. I thought I had the patience for it going into it, knowing me. And I'm just sitting and you know what? I've got two. I've got a cutting from my original plant and the original plant, both of which have got two scraggly ass looking leaves at the moment. It's still running. It's still not doing very much. Underwhelmed, really underwhelmed. It's nice when it's doing stuff. If it was a plant that grew consistently, I think a lot of people would have these in their collection. Stunning. They, they give kind of certain Raphidophora tetrasperma vibes, but more interesting, hugely so, basically. But if it grew as consistently as a lot of Raphidophora tetraspermas do, then I think, as I said, this would outcompete that every single time because it's just that bit of extraness going on. But as it is, as the plant is, and with all those things, a very underwhelming plant. The Philodendron brantianum on the other side can grow consistently. I've managed to grow it consistently. It doesn't have very extensive root system, or at least mine, I don't know, I don't really care about it too much, but I've been growing mine for like three or four years at this point. Am I still whelmed? I'm underwhelmed or whelmed. I'm whelmed or underwhelmed of this plant since day one. It's, there's a bit of silveriness. Do the leaves get any bigger? Not massively. So there's better silvery, big-leaved plants out there. I'm thinking of they're not necessarily easy, but the Mamei, the Plowmanii, there's even the, oh, the Majestic, I think the Philodendron Majestic might be the other one, that have got that silveriness and they can get those bigger leaves and they're a bit more consistent in their growth pattern. Yes, I would say if you want something like that, go for those. The Brantianum is also relatively tricky to grow. Like I think from when I did, I think I did a review and I'll add it. I've done a video, I'm pretty sure I've done a video, so I'll link it at the top there. I think a lot of people did say that they either gave up with theirs or they struggled with theirs. I didn't necessarily have that experience, but it's not a particularly interesting plant. After the initial kind of like, oh, look at the silvery leaves. No. And I don't know whether or not there's a different form of it that has come out, which is a bit more easy to grow and a bit more rewarding. And I think I may have seen it somewhere in like plant stores or garden centers. So if there is, apologies. But yeah, for me, it's just a bit like, oh, it's not particularly fast. Is it consistent growing? No. Can it throw a hissy fit? Yes. Can it go towards root rot really quickly? Yes. Do you lose interest? Because essentially it's a, it's a silver philodendron scandens. Yes. It is what it is. It's, it does what it does on the tin, basically. It says what it does on the tin. So yeah. Okay, the next one was from a haul that I did a while back, and this might surprise certain people. This because it has grown considerably, and I mean it's got some issues on some of the lowest leaves, 
But this is the Luthrae, yeah. So I've got the Luthrae and the Frederick Stylii. The Frederick Stylii is one that really did surprise me, and I've enjoyed, enjoyed growing it quite a bit. The Luthrae, which is this one, and I actually have to say it's bad because the, the newest leaf is the most impressive leaf out of all of them that it's had in my care. I mean, look at this. Blooms. Another leaf coming in there. And the, the kind of janky support stick. Does this need a janky support stick? 100%. I have never seen an anthurium that wants to vine quite as much as this one does, basically. So does it grow fast? Yes. Does it suffer from pests? Yes. The volume of like spider mites that will go onto this plant is insane. You also get this weird kind of, so the inflorescence goes out that way. It's very odd. There's also a lot of other nodes. The positives on this is very large internodal spaces. It does want to climb. Each one of those has got some decent aerial roots on it. So if you wanted to propagate an anthurium easily enough and take cuttings, this would definitely be one for you. It has got that strappy leaf, but I'll show you if I can bring it in. Maybe you might be able to see the damage that even like the spider mites have already caused on this leaf. And I have been spraying this and dealing with this and having like predatory mites on this for months. It underwhelmed me. And especially because, I don't know, I was expecting this to be more like a pendant anthurium where it kind of drops down and the Lutheri is. And I didn't realize this is one that just kind of grows up and has kind of those strappy leaves. Had I have known of that, and as I said, this might be one that might surprise some people and some people might actually like the way that this grows because this is unusual for an anthurium. But for me, for where I wanted it and for what I wanted from it, it's not giving me that. So it is underwhelming for me. So the anthurium lutheri. The next one on the list and the last one on the list, and hopefully this, you might be able to see this. Yes, you should be able to see this. So you should be able to see the plant. If I move the Hellenia philodendron out from in front of it, right there in the back, you can see those dark green foliage. That is the philodendron gigas. And the reason why it's on this list is because for me, the philodendron gigas kind of gives that vibe of the melanochrysum, but it doesn't have quite the speed of the melanochrysum for me. Is it a plant that I know from other people in other videos that I've done that can grow quite quickly for them? Yes. Predominantly a lot of people in Australia that made those comments that got more mature plants. I never had that option with that plant and I've had it for nearly three to four years now, probably even five it doesn't do very much and it, it can be a bit of a slow grower. No, it really is a slow grower, basically. And it, does it do a bit better now that it's attached to the wall? Yes. Should this maybe have been a plant that I had on a moss pole really early on rather than just something like a stick? Probably. But still, it's just that tiny bit underwhelming. And it's predominantly to do with the speed of growth. So there is that to be said. If you're not particularly bothered about something being on the slower side, this might be one that might not be an issue for you necessarily. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about all of my underwhelming plants. So coming into kind of a quick summary of everything that we were just talking about. So the Paris Verde, I have my trusty list here. Paris Verde, it is because of how difficult it can be, that speckling on the leaves, the fact that it can grow quite large into nodal spaces, but there is that risk of it fully reverting back, at least for the next few leaves. When you make the cutting, uh, it's just a lot of effort for not much payout, especially when you've got something like the Jose Bueno, which is very similar in appearance, but doesn't need anywhere near as much babying. So for me, Paris of Verde is a bit... Uh. Then the Oblique, and I'm not going to dwell on the Oblique too much. My opinions are well known about this one. Is it a nice plant? Yes. For the prices that it used to be, absolutely not for how inconsistent it might be in terms of its growth, in terms of runners and all of these things. Is this a plant, I'm going to go on a limb here, to kind of say that maybe it should have been left in nature and not as a house plant? Possibly. It's an unpopular opinion. But it is one that probably in its exact conditions where it lives, it would do really, really well. And I did hear a lot of people that said, you didn't put your oblique on like a moss pole and it didn't have a chance to attach. That's why it was constantly sending runners. 
twice I have tried it on a moss ball, twice it has never attached. It will just throw off runners in different directions at that point. So I don't know whether or not that is necessarily accurate. <laughs> then a variegated peace lily. Oh, variegated peace lily. <laughs> Beige plant for me in terms of like, yeah, it's a bit of green splashiness. It's a bit slow. It's If you want one, go for a more mature form, as in like get a bigger plant rather than a smaller one like I did. But just bear in mind that it might not be everything that you hope for. If you manage to get a big one, great, that you can really enjoy that. But uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's just a bit of that. Um, the medium, medium, great potential for this plant. If it was something like the Raphidophora tetrasperma in terms of speed and consistency, this would be fantastic. This, like the Philodendron gloriosum, and I've made this comment before, is one of those plants, same as the Oblica, that Yes, they can be grown in household conditions and in our collections. Do I think, like a lot of these plants, but there's certain plants like these that I think would probably just be better off in nature where they are meant to be growing. It's going to be holding true for everything, I know. But yeah, this is one that I think if you wanted to, and you're in the right conditions to grow this in the garden, this might be an interesting one, to grow in a garden situation, basically. Very, very cool. Um, the Brantianum glorified silver philodendron heteracium. I can't say much more about that. It can be tricky to grow it, so know that going into it, basically. The juvenile philodendron spiritus sancti, yes. The juvenile form can be a bit underwhelming. We all know that the mature form can be quite interesting to look at. So for me, this is one that as long as you invest your time and your effort for the next two or three possibly more years than it will take to get a more mature form, especially if you can only afford something like a seedling, which a lot of people might not even be able to afford that at the moment. Just bear that in mind that it just might be a plant that's a bit meh for a while, and it will kind of sit in the corner, slowly growing into something that you can be proud of. I know that sounds so horrible, but hopefully you know what I mean with this one. Then the Philodendron ornatum. <laughs> So pathetic. Uh, it does look a bit like a fake plant. And if I'm being honest, a fake plant would probably look a bit better. So just get a fake plant. I know controversial opinions here. <laughs> like as plastic as. But then the Gygus that we were just looking at now. Again, there's a lot of people in Australia. I think some of you were mentioning that you were also growing this in the garden. That would be very cool to see, basically. Very, very cool. And it's a shame because the Geigers, for me, had all the potential in the world to be something truly spectacular, but struggles. And I know if you can, and I've seen a few people that are growing it, huge baby to you. Hopefully I could as well. But for me, it's just underwhelmed me so much. And the variegated Adansonia. <laughs> <laughs> the variegated Adansonia is one of those things, and I do appreciate that even in my humidity levels, I'm not saying I'm the, the golden standard of humidity levels in my conservatory. What I'm saying is, yes, you could put it in a terrarium and it would get all of the humidity, basically. But for me, and again, this is personal opinion, and I do I will caveat this and say I own a lot of terrariums and I will continue to own a lot of terrariums. If a plant is something that I've been desperately wanting to grow for a very long period of time and it's taken a lot of research and getting it to the price getting it at the price that i want to get it to be able to grow something like this and i have it behind a glass bubble all the time it takes some of the fun away from me it takes that interactivity away and don't get me wrong as i said i've got terrariums but for my terrariums i will usually have much more common house plants in and just basically turn my terrarium into a little glimpse and little bubble of like a jungle and i love that but for a plant that I want to have that tactile experience of being able to experience it not behind glass, like it's in a museum somewhere, yeah, for me, those plants are just not it. The same way that I can do the oblique behind glass and it might do a bit better. But I want to experience these plants in my space. It kind of defeats the purpose of it. For me, again, this is just my opinion. But yeah. Uh, apologies for a bit of a more bleak video, but I know a lot of you do find these quite useful as well at times. So have, do you agree with me on some of these plants? Do you disagree with me on this plants? We don't all have to agree on this. I'm completely okay with that. 
But tell me, tell me down below. Tell me down below. Let's all have that conversation. Be respectful of me and yourselves and each other, basically. Please do. Like, let's keep it civil. But yeah, let's have that conversation down in the comments below. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.